I'll be showing 14 new features in Microsoft Teams. This includes Outlook integration, meetings updates, SharePoint integration, and core updates to the Teams platform. So let's get started. The first new feature is this new Share to Teams button in Outlook. You'll need Outlook Office 365 version, but we've rolled out this Share to Teams. So if I've got an email message here and I wanna share this mail directly into Teams, I just click this button when the message is selected and you type in where you wanna put it. I've got my product team, I'll select general and there's the channel along with the team and I can even add a message if I want. Now I have attachments in this. If I don't wanna put the attachments, I can uncheck that, but I'll check it and click share. And now it's sending this mail right into that Teams channel. The second new feature is Meeting Recap, which can bring together all the artifacts of the meeting after the meeting in one place to keep it nice and organized. I'm here presenting in a meeting, and what I will be doing is turning on recording first. So I'll hit the three dot menu, do start recording. Now I'll also turn on the start transcription. Now the transcript is running as well, and I will keep talking, we'll close that. And then lastly, we'll do a start meeting notes. So I'm gonna go here and click on meeting notes. Now we'll just wrap up the meeting and I'm gonna show how the meeting recap works. So we'll just stop the recording right here, turn off transcription, and now I'll just choose end meeting. Now after the meeting is over, I wanna go and see this aggregated meeting recap view. You normally can see chat and there's a mix of things right here, but in meeting details is where it's all aggregated. In the upper right, you'll see the little dots and the dashes right here. That's the details button. I'm gonna click this. This takes me into the details right here. And you can see there's a recording, the transcript, and the meeting notes all in one place. So it makes it really easy to see everything that is nice and right together. Now on the attendee side, I'm signed in as Alex, one of the attendees, and here's this planning meeting in my calendar. After the fact, I can double click this meeting, open it up, and I will also see on the details tab here, the recording, the transcript, and the meeting notes. One other note, it can take a minute or two for all of that to aggregate and show up in detail. So if you don't see it immediately, just give it a minute. The third new feature is share system audio on a Mac. So I'm in a Teams meeting here and I'm on a Mac. I'm gonna go up to the share tray and open it up. And now you're gonna see this include computer sound. I will turn that switch on. Now we're gonna switch over to the attendees who are watching on their Windows devices and they're gonna hear that audio come through from the Mac. That a child can go from basically nothing to having the world at their fingertips. The fourth new feature is speaker attribution for live captions. So I'm here presenting inside of Teams. I have my class. We're gonna go through my solar system deck. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on live captions. So the three dot menu, I go here and choose turn on live captions. And you can see along the bottom that now it is captioning with my name next to it. Now I'm gonna ask the class what their favorite planet is. So, hey folks, what is your favorite planet? My favorite planet is Mars because M is my favorite letter. My favorite is Jupiter because it's the largest planet in our solar system. And my favorite is also Saturn. The rings are gorgeous. Well, great. And as people can see, as they've been talking, it captions right next to their name and their picture. And then on the right hand side, you were seeing their video gets highlighted. So it makes it really easy to tell who's talking. The fifth new feature is transcription in meetings and downloading them after the meeting is over. So let's go turn on the transcript. I'll hit the three dot menu here and choose start transcription. Now on the right hand side, you'll see that the transcript is open and as I'm talking in real time, it will be captioning everything that I say. So Anne, I wanna know from you, our friend Elon Musk is planning a trip to Mars. What do you think about that? I think it's gonna be an incredible day when man actually gets to Mars. Any other comments from the class on a trip to Mars? Would you go if you had the opportunity to go? Only if I could go with Matt Damon, then it would be cool. So you can see the entire transcript is going along the right hand side. And I'll also go and choose stop transcription and I'll turn off live captions. Now I'm done and I'm in the Teams meeting chat for the meeting we just finished. You can see that that meeting recording is right here and I could do things like open it up, I could share it. And also this meeting transcript is here. Now, if I click this, it opens this up into this new recordings and transcripts tab. And now I have the entire transcript that we just talked about and I can download this. So I can download it as a VTT file, which is common for transcripts or as a Word document, or I can delete this. The sixth new feature is an out of office message that you can set in Teams. So if I click my little profile here, I'm gonna choose set status message and I'm gonna choose schedule out of office. Now I'll turn on automatic replies and I'll give my message here 
Now I can choose to send replies outside of my organization. So if people message me in Outlook outside my organization, just like you can in Outlook, set the out of office message here and I can leave a different message if I want. And I can even choose to send replies during a certain period. So maybe I only wanna give the replies between April 8th and April 10th. So it's very much like Outlook, but this works both in Teams and in your Outlook calendar at the same time. Click save. The seventh new feature is the settings have moved. So it used to be under the profile picture here, but now if you see the little three dot menu next to it, if I click that, you'll see settings. So I can access all my team settings right in here. And they've also put things like Zoom and check for updates, download mobile app, keyboard shortcuts, all that good stuff is now under this three dot menu. The eighth new feature is the ability to set SharePoint file permissions directly from the files that you upload in Teams. This is really handy. So I'm gonna chat here and I'm gonna say, here's my presentation. And I'll click the attachment and I'm gonna attach a file from OneDrive. And here's a presentation, I'll click share. And you can see now there's anyone with a link can edit. If I click this, it has all of the nice SharePoint permissions. So I can say, you know what? I don't want editing. I wanna block the download. There's a password, there's an expiration date all these different options that I could do, like in SharePoint, I can now apply right here. So now when I send this attachment, all of those permissions are properly set and I've put it right from my OneDrive. The ninth new feature is the brand new Viva Connections app, formerly known as the home site app from SharePoint in Teams. And a note, I'm not gonna show the deployment in this video, but if you look in the upper right, there's a link to the full video where I show how IT admins can deploy this for your organization. You can see that in the upper left, this has been deployed, the Contoso app. That is the app for my intranet. I'm gonna click here. Now you can see this beautiful SharePoint home site, the landing is now part of Teams. And this app has been deployed. Now once I have this page up, I click the Contoso button again, and it opens up this really handy menu. So all the quick access information, I can navigate around, benefits, all this stuff. If I scroll down, I can also access some of these sites. So let's go to this link here, the perspective. This brings up a rich SharePoint page that lives out on SharePoint. I can go back down here, find another one. Maybe I'll go to the newsletter. Now what's also nice is in the upper right, there's this copy link button. So if I want to get a link to this page here, I click that to copy it. Now I can go into teams and here's something on the general tab. Maybe I want to share this link with my team, check out this page. And when I paste the link, it immediately resolves to a really rich card that goes right back to that SharePoint node. Another top requested feature that we've added with Viva Connections is that ability to type in the team search bar here, but then search across the entire Contoso tenant in SharePoint. So watch this, I'm gonna type Singapore, and there's a new option here, the second option, search in Contoso. I can search across the entire Contoso tenant. I just click opens in SharePoint site, and now this searches across the entire Contoso tenant, all this great information about Singapore that's coming up. And this is something I can launch right from here in Teams with my Viva Connections app. The other nice thing is I can drag this button where I want to. So if I wanna drag this down underneath Teams, I can do that too. So I can put my Viva Connections button wherever I would like. By default, it's gonna be in the upper left, but you can change that. Also, this shows up in the web. Here is Teams in the web. Here's the Contosa button here, if I click it, it navigates me to my home site, and if I click this, the menu pops out, so it operates in the exact same way as desktop. And always, if I wanna to go to the actual SharePoint site that's rendering here, I just go here and click the little globe button to go to the website. And here I am on the actual SharePoint site that is underlying this, so it's all linked together. Now to set up all of this, you need to have your IT admin follow the steps I'm about to show here. We just launched a brand new page for Viva Connections on docs.com, and the link is on the screen, and it will also be in the description. The 10th feature are improvements to what we call Teamify, to take any SharePoint site and quickly build a team around it. So I have a SharePoint team site here, and you'll see in the lower left, there's this add Microsoft Teams. We call this Teamify. I'll click this, and this wizard pops up, and it lets me just click continue to set up a team. And SharePoint will automatically surface things that I might want to add. So it's found some pages here, there's actually some project files that I've been working on and an issue tracker. And you can even split it up by pages and lists and document libraries, but SharePoint recommends it, which makes it kind of nice. So now I'll just click add teams and it will create the team behind the scenes and import all of this SharePoint data right into it. Now it's also added a teams link on the left here. So if I click this, 
it drills me right into teams and now it takes me right over to this new team with project planning but you'll see it has all my files here the issue tracker that i imported and then the project files add a couple files and even the site page itself so just a couple of clicks it brought that entire sharepoint site right here and created a team behind it with all the pages and resources that are helpful the 11th new feature is making improvements to our emoji picker to allow more diverse selections so i'm going to click here on the little emoji picker and i'm going to click on the hand right here now you can see these little dots are next to the default kind of yellow color. I can right click on any one of these and choose a different skin tone. So maybe I want to choose this one here and I can say that looks great. But as you can see, there are lots of different options. So I can choose the color of any of these skin tones in a way that works best for me. The 12th new feature is an improved history back button. So you might not have noticed in the upper left of teams, there's a little back button to go backwards and forwards to remember where you've been. So if I hover over this, I actually get a little history. So if I wanna check, oh, I had messages with Arden, I can click here and go right back. Or if maybe there was a team that I went to earlier and posted something, I can go right back. So it's really nice to have this history button to navigate when you can't remember where you've been. And I can always click the forward button as well. So I hit back a couple of times, I can go forward. So sort of like navigating through your history. The 13th feature is adding a custom image to your iPhone or iPad background in a Teams meeting. And Android support is coming very soon after this, but I'll be showing the iPhone here. I'm here in my Teams calendar and I'm gonna join a meeting. So I will tap join. And now you're gonna see in the upper left, there's a video effect. So I'm gonna click this and I have all these different choices. So there's some default ones that come with it. I can choose a couple of the fun ones. If you're in the education, you get these. There's a little Minecraft and some other exciting ones. You can also upload a video. I've uploaded this fun office one. Now, because I haven't joined the meeting, it'll look in reverse, but when you actually join the meeting, that gets corrected the other way around. And then there's just Blur, and Blur has been there for a while. But I'm gonna go and choose Minecraft, and now I'm gonna tap Done in the upper right. Okay, I'm ready to join the meeting. Let's click Join now. Now let's change the photo in the meeting. Tap the three dots there, then choose Video Effects, and we're gonna go down, let's choose some balloons. That's kind of fun. Now we're gonna add our own photo. Tap plus, choose a picture. There's a new one, hit done, okay. The 14th feature is easily generating a share link to a meet now meeting. So let's say I wanna meet now and I'm gonna invite a couple of people. I click the button. Now normally it would just start the meeting, but now instead I can choose this get a link to share. I click this, now this generates a link and it copies it to the clipboard automatically. And then what I can do is I can send this to someone. So I can copy this and send it in Outlook, or I can just click share via email and it'll pop up Outlook and I could pop this in and then I can invite anybody with this meeting share link. So I've opened up Outlook when I click that share via email button and now I can address this to somebody and send it off. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.